Today, I'm going to teach you how to dominate every single SAT math question, regardless of complexity. I want to give you an overall strategy so you'll know how to tackle these questions, regardless of what they're asking. So I'll give you an example. Have you ever been to an escape room? You're in this room and it's not completely obvious how you're going to get out of the room. You find a clue. It leads you to another clue. It leads you to another clue. Same thing with the SAT math. You'll see the problem, but it's not completely obvious how you're going to solve the problem. But there will be a series of steps that's going to get you the answer. So trust me, you'll eventually lead to the answer. There's only one way to get there and we're going to get there. The problem is that students freeze the second they see the question. They look at the question and they just freeze immediately. We're going to get past that. So there's a few principles you have to follow on every single math problem. So principle number one, you need to understand what the question is asking. I know that sounds intuitive, but read the question and try and understand what they're asking. You may not know how to answer it. You may be like, wait a minute, I don't have enough information. That's okay. That's exactly how they structure the questions. That's what they want you to say. If it was easy, everybody would get the right answer and we wouldn't even be talking. So principle number two, you need to ask yourself, what do I know? So that's really important. Look at the question and ask yourself, what do I know? What we're not looking to solve the problem right now, we're just looking, what do I know? Those are the clues that's gonna lead you to the right answer. Just like an escape room, you don't know how to get out, but one thing will lead to another, which will lead to another. For example, if they give you a triangle and there are two angles, you know the third. If they give you a right triangle and there are two sides, you know the third. So yes, maybe they're not asking for the third side or for the third angle, but you know it. And if you know it, you can write it down and that's going to eventually lead you to the right answer. Principle number three, set up. There has to be a way to set up the problem to get the right answer. So if they give you an equation of a line, they're not going to give it to you as y equals mx plus b. That's just going to be too easy. So you convert it to y equals mx plus b. Try and set it up the best you can based on what you know, based on the math fundamentals. There's really only a small amount of math fundamentals that you need to know for the test. So the fourth principle is solve. Just go ahead and solve the problem. The last principle, principle number five, and this is the most important principle. This is what differentiates most students from getting a perfect score and it's answer what's asked. If you just do this step, you'll be able to improve your score significantly. Answer the question that's being asked. So you run all these steps and you find X, but they're not even asking for X. Maybe they're asking for Y, maybe they're asking for X plus Y. We have to make sure to answer the question that's being asked. So a lot of students and students we've worked with, currently work with and in the past, the reason why they don't end up getting a perfect score is not because of the difficult problems, it's because of the easy problems. They just don't answer what's being asked. They say, oh, I made a silly mistake. Stop for a second. The SAT made this environment for you to make this mistake. Follow these steps for every math problem that you do, and you're going to be one step closer to getting that perfect score. So let's, let's work through a couple of examples, and I'm going to show it to you right now. And we're going to take problems from actual previously administered exams, just like we always do. So let's look at question number 27 right here. So the perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 624 centimeters. The height of this triangle is k squared of three centimeters where k is constant. What is the value of k? Immediately, you might ask yourself, oh man, you just freeze, right? But let's take it one step at a time and follow the principles. Number one, understand what the question is asking. Number two, what do I know? So what do you know? So let's stop right there and say the perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 624 centimeters. So let's start with what I know. Well, I know what an equilateral triangle is. An equilateral triangle is a triangle where all sides are equal. So we understand that. So all sides are going to be equal. So let's say all, let's say all sides are, this is X, this is X, this is X. And I do know what perimeter is. Perimeter is I add up all the sides and that's gonna be the perimeter. So the perimeter, perimeter is gonna be equal to X plus X plus X, which is just three X. Okay, great. Now, what are they telling me? They're telling me that the perimeter is 624. So three X equals 624. And now I just divide by three and I find X. X is 208. So I found what X is. X is 208. So this is 208. Eight. This is 208. This side is 208. Great. Now let's move on. The height of the triangle is k squared of three centimeters. All right. Well, let's understand what is the height. So let's create the height right here. And they're saying, well, if I create a height, then this would be 90 degrees. Well, since it's an equilateral triangle, we know that this is 60 and this is 60. 
And since we're breaking up this 60, this would be 30 degrees. Okay, so we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle here, and the height is k squared of three, k squared of three. Okay, so what do I know? I know this side is 208. I know this side right here is half of 208 or 104. I know the height is k squared of three. I know this angle is 30, this angle is 60, this angle is 90. Well, based on the math fundamentals, I know that for a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the relationship of the sides are x, x squared of 3, and 2x. So if this is 104 and this is 208, then this side has to be 104 squared of 3. So k squared of 3 is 104 squared of 3. So I know that k has to be 104. Do you see how we did that? We didn't immediately jump to solving the problem because it's it's almost impossible to do. We took what we know and we built on top of it. All right, let's move on and let's let's um, let's work on another example. Let's go to question number twenty-two. A cube has a length of sixty-eight inches. Okay, a solid sphere with a radius thirty-four inches is inside the cube such that the sphere touches the center of each face of the cube. To the nearest cubic inch, what is the volume of the space in the cube not taken up by the sphere? All right, so that's a lot there. So let's draw a cube and let's just figure out what we know. So let's draw this cube. And what do we know about a cube? We know that a cube, if an edge is 68 inches, then it's all the same, 68, 68, 68. And we also know what the volume of the cube is because they're asking volume. So the volume of the cube is just 68 times 68 times 68. And let's put that into my handy dandy uh, calculator. And that's gonna give me 314, 432. Okay, great. And now they tell us a sphere, a sphere with a radius of 34 inches. So let's draw this, this sphere. I'm not gonna draw it inside the cube. It just gets a little bit messy. And just even though I drew a circle, assume that it's sort of a three dimensional sort of a sphere shape. The radius is 34 inches. So then what is the volume of a sphere? Well, the volume of a sphere, you could even look at the beginning, the SAT gives it to you in the beginning in the formulas, but you should memorize it, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So then we know what r is, r is 34. So then you just do 4 thirds times pi, pi times 34 cubed. All right, so this is 34. And then that gives you 164, 636. Okay, so we have the volume of the sphere. We have the volume of the cube. Now they're saying that the sphere is inside the cube and they're asking, what is the volume of space in the cube not taken up by the sphere? So they're looking for, take the volume of the cube and subtract out the volume of the sphere. They're looking for all the empty space that exists around it. So we just take the volume of the, of the cube and subtract the volume of the sphere. And that's 314, 432 minus 164, 636. And that gives us 149, 796. So we took a seemingly complicated problem and then simplified it and got to the right answer. All right, let's move on. Let's do another example. So let's do example number 13. A circle has center O and points R and S lie on the circle. So let's actually write down what we know. A circle, that's a circle. There's a center. The center is O, got it. And points R and S lie on the circle, R and S. So since they don't tell you exactly where, you could pick whatever points you want. Then they're saying triangle O, R, S. So O, R, S right here. So that's triangle O, R, S is 88 degrees. So angle ROS, so that's right here. This angle right here is 88 degrees. What is the measure of RSO? RSO, so that's this angle right here that they're asking for. 
Okay, so then we know that they're asking for that angle. We're writing down what we know. What information do we know? Well, we know that OR and OS is the radius of the triangle, is the radius of the circle. So that means they have to be the same. Well, if they're the same, then that is a um, isosceles triangle. And actually these angles are the same. Wait a minute. So I know that all the angles in the triangle have to add up to 180. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 180 minus 88, and that's going to give me 92. So I know that these two angles have to add up to 92. And since they're the same, they have to be the same. So I just do 92 over two and I get 46. And that's the answer. So the concepts, the fundamental concepts are relatively simple. It's more about writing down what you know and using that to guide you to the answer. Okay, so let's move on to our, to our last problem. An isosceles right triangle has a perimeter of 94 plus 94 squared to two inches. What is the length in inches of one leg of this triangle? Okay, so now you're speaking my language. Isosceles right triangle. All right, so let's do let's write that down. So let's draw a right triangle here. And this is a right triangle. And what does isosceles mean? Isosceles means that these two sides are the same. So if these two sides are the same, I know that these angles are going to be the same. So this has to be 45 degrees. This has to be 45 degrees. And then I know that that for, uh, for a 45, 45, 90 triangle, it's in the ratio X, X, X squared of two. So now they're asking for perimeter. So what is the perimeter of this? It's X plus X plus X squared of two. That's the perimeter. So that tells me two X plus X squared of two is equal to 94 plus 94 square root of two. And, um, and now they're asking for X. So now what could I do? I could, I could actually solve for X. I could try and solve for X, but even easier, let's just plug in these answer choices into X and see if that matches 94 plus 94 square root of two. Let's try 47. So if I plug in 47 to X, I get two times 47 plus 47 square root of two. Two times 47 is a 94. So 94 plus 47 square root of two. That doesn't match it. Now let's plug in, let's plug in 47 square root of two. So two times 47 square root of two plus 47 square root of two times square root of two. Well, two times 47 square root of two is just 94 square root of two. So that that's good. Plus 47 times square root of two square root of two. Well, square root of two square root of two is just two. Two times 47 is 94. That's it, 94 plus 94 square root of two. We didn't generally think that would be the answer, right? But it actually turns out to be that is the answer. So as you can see, just follow these four principles and that'll guide you to the right way of, of solving these problems. So really do appreciate all of your support and um, really thank all of our subscribers. So be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you at the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.